Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna to make my ultimate 3D printer enclosure and electronics workstation. The last big piece of furniture we need for the office is a dedicated electronics station. And I've actually made a table for that before, but now that's become Josh's desk. So we're gonna make a really big table over here using a really cool countertop that I have, but this table is gonna be dual purpose. Underneath the table, we're gonna build in a 3D printer enclosure to keep the air around the printers the same temperature. That'll produce better prints. We actually already did the design work for this, and if you want to see more about how we came up with that design, check out the behind the scenes video on the second channel. The top for this table is gonna be a piece of stainless steel countertop that I got from my grandfather, and this is actually out of an old McDonald's restaurant, and it's currently 12 feet long. We're gonna cut it down to eight feet. Let's get to it. After I got my line drawn at eight feet, I clamped on a piece of steel to act as a cutting guide. I put a really thin cutoff wheel in my grinder and made several passes to cut all the way through the piece. This took a little bit of time, but it made for a really clean cut in the end. There was another support structure built into the bottom of the countertop, so I had to cut through that as well. Then I used a file to clean off the outside edge of the cut. It really didn't need much, it was in pretty good shape. This is definitely not a nice piece of furniture, it's more of a utility work table, so I made a really simple frame out of some 2x4s. If you haven't seen the videos I made on making this miter saw station, you should definitely check them out. It's one of my favorite shop projects and it's super useful. I got all these pieces cut, now I'm gonna lay them out flat and use some pocket hole screws to put them together to a flat 2x4 frame. This is the same type of frame that I used on my miter saw station. It's super strong, super fast, super easy. It's a good choice. Big thanks to Casper for sponsoring this video. Their mattresses are designed, developed, and assembled in the US, and you get to sleep on it in your house for 100 nights. And well, we all spend a third of our lives in our bed, so you may as well be comfortable. If you don't like it for any reason whatsoever, they'll give you your money back and come take the mattress away so you don't have to mess with it. They have three mattresses now, the original, the Wave, and the Essential, and you can go check them all out at casper.com slash ILTMS. And if you use the code ILTMS, you get $50 off select mattresses. Be sure to go check them out. That's casper.com slash ILTMS and use the code ILTMS. Thanks, Casper. Before we assemble the frame, I'm gonna cut some slots in all of the front pieces so we can drop in some doors. I'm gonna have some sliding acrylic doors, and I'm only using acrylic so that we can see the printers, but if you want a cheaper option, you could use anything else, even cardboard, just to seal up the front. Quick note, we're gonna cut a taller slot in the top so that we can take these doors and put them up and then drop them down into the track. The kerf of the blade and the pieces of acrylic were both an eighth of an inch thick. Now this works, except that it would be too tight to slide the pieces back and forth. So we made one pass on the table saw and just slightly moved over the fence and made another pass. I ended up with a slot that was just a little bit over an eighth of an inch, but it made enough room for the pieces to slide easily. And since I was planning on four doors, I made two slots that ran from end to end. So I have two sets of doors that can fit within those tracks and slide back and forth. So I lined up my outer frames with my long pieces of a two x four and just made sure that the slots lined up where all the joints met. The piece of stainless steel countertop had been sitting in an alleyway for quite a while collecting dust and paint and all sorts of dirt, so we had to clean it all off. We tried sanders and paint thinners and scrapers and all sorts of stuff, and it really just came down to elbow grease. It took a while, but eventually we got a pretty nice finish. After it looked fully clean, we used some degreaser to make sure we removed any of the chemicals or anything left over on the surface, and once that was fully wiped down, we went over the whole thing with a coat of paste wax just to seal it up and stop it from getting dirty again. I 
I cut down all the pieces of acrylic on the table saw. This cuts really easily, but it is big and floppy, so just be careful if you do it. Take your time. I'm actually moving really slowly here, and although it looks like my hands are close to the blade, they're really not. I wanted to drill a hole in each one of these doors to make it easier to slide the doors back and forth. So I marked where I wanted the hole, clamped all four pieces together, and then at the drill press, drill the hole through all four at the same time. I also cut one piece to fit on the end of this just so I could see in from the outside. I drove in a couple of screws at the bottom and used those as a ledge to set this piece on, then put in some more screws on the top and on the sides to hold it against the 2x4. You could also drill holes and screw it right to the 2x4 as well. Next up, we broke down a full sheet of plywood into some usable sized pieces to make panels to set the 3D printers on. The plan was for these to have drawer slides on the bottom of them so that the panels could slide out in case we needed to get to the printer. Just a tip, these drywall squares are awesome for making several marks across a large panel. The drawer slides come apart into two pieces and the rails get screwed onto the shelf piece or the drawer. Then we put the slides back together and added some double-sided tape to hold the bottom pieces against the frame. I set the shelf in place and then fully extended it, leaving the rails where they needed to stay. At that point, you can just drive in some screws and leave the double-sided tape in there. It's not gonna hurt anything and it'll compress easily once you get it screwed in place. This is the biggest printer that I want to put down here, and to make sure that it would be able to slide fully, I put the slides underneath where the feet of the printer meet the wood. That way all the weight of the printer is transferred right down onto the slides, but we found by using half-inch material here, there's some bow, and the feet in the middle of the printer don't actually touch. That's really bad because that means the printer is going to try to wobble around while it's printing. We're not going to have that. So, we're going to pull out this half-inch material and replace it with three-quarter. Replace that piece with a piece of three-quarter. I put the rails on in the exact same spot, so it should just drop right in. When you have 3D printers, you end up with a whole bunch of filament, and storing that is sometimes a problem. I wanted to make a filament storage rack to go inside the enclosure here. And for this, I just made a really simple box made out of plywood, and then cut some thin pieces of plywood to act as rails. To figure out the sizes for this, I got my largest spool of filament to figure out the spacing between the rows and the depth of the storage unit overall. But unfortunately, I had even more filament to store, so I made another shelf that could fit above one of the 3D printers. This was also made out of 3 quarter inch plywood with a bottom, a back piece, and again, I used a spool to figure out these sizes. I also wanted to cut some really simple gussets to make sure that it was strong enough to hold the weight of several spools of filament. After I got this thing put together, I screwed it right into the back 2x4 above where one of the printers was going to sit. It was plenty strong and held quite a bit of filament. I also screwed in a long power strip to run all of the printers and some LED lights. These lights have an adhesive back, so I just stuck them right to the back side of the 2x4. I also plugged the LEDs into a motion detector so they're only on when you're in the room. The acrylic doors are thin and flexible, so it made it really easy to bend them just enough to push them up into the slot and then drop them down into the slot at the bottom. Once I had them all in, they slid back and forth very easily. I chose four doors here, but you could definitely break this down into any division that you wanted, depending on how big you need the openings to be.
Here it is, my ultimate electronics and 3D printing workstation. I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. Now the placement of everything up top will probably change as I build some projects up here. It'll get rearranged to make it better to use, but it's a great amount of space to work on electronic stuff and to finish 3D prints. I'm really happy with it. And then we've got this huge space down below to keep the temperature around the printers consistent. We've got a bunch of desiccant packages in there as well to keep the humidity down, and that's great for filament storage. Like I said, this thing will probably continue to morph and change as I use it, but this is pretty awesome. I'd love to hear if you've got other ideas how to make either one of these things better, so leave those down in the comments. We're also going to have a behind the scenes video for this one on the second channel, and that'll be linked right here if you want to go check it out. I've got lots and lots of other projects that you may be interested in as well, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Put them together into a flat 2x4 frame. That was close. We're also going to have a. We're also going to have a. We're also going to have a.